Hey guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another Retro RPG. The end of another week, the end of another poll. We've got a very significant win for the Judge Dredd Companion, for the Judge Dredd role-playing game. Now as usual, I'll cover that on the desktop in a wee second, and I'll be back at the end of the video with some other channel-related stuff and some other poll-related stuff. But before I do that, I'd like to take a moment to talk about my Patreons, who this week I have been told know that incorrect sentencing is an automatic fail. They also know which of the two Judge Dredd films is far better. Now these are great people whose support helps make all of this possible and is very very much appreciated. Now if you'd like to join them, I sure wish you would, and help support the channel, or you'd like to gain access to these videos a week early, or you'd like to gain access to one of the other levels of patronage we've got, then we've got a Patreon in the description down below. If you check it out, it'd be very much appreciated. But anyway, let's have a look at the Judge Dredd Companion. So this is the Judge Dredd Companion. For the Judge Dredd role-playing game, funnily enough, it came out from Games Workshop in 1987. And, putting my hands up, this is my second copy of this. I bought this second hand. Um, and it's missing a few of the handouts here. It's got one of the sheets left, which we'll come to later. But there were some sheets which you cut out to make a kind of board game. One of the sections of the book explains a board game based on one of the storylines in the Judge Dredd comic. And I'm afraid those pages are missing, so I won't be able to show you those. My first copy of it is absolutely pristine. Um, I lent it to a friend back in 1989, so he's had it for far longer than I did. I had it for about two years, and he's had it for about 30. <laughs> but just after he borrowed it, and I believe it was my Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader rulebook, he moved away. He got a job down in Nottingham, so he moved down there. And from there, he got another job in London, another job in London after that, then a job in Kyoto in Japan. Then he moved over to Edmonton in Canada, and then finally, just a few years ago, moved to Stockholm in Sweden. So my original book has been well-travelled. It's seen much of the world, even if I haven't. And it is still pristine where this one isn't. But anyway, first of all, this cover. It's Chris Arkelios. I think I'm pronouncing his name right. Picture of Cy Judge Anderson. An absolutely beautiful piece of artwork. But a lovely piece of graphic design in across it. The very sort of plain coloured cover, the gradient in background, the large logo, it's a very eye-catching and appealing cover, at least to me. I very much find the iconography of Judge Dredd very, very appealing. Now, going over to the back cover. So, hey creep, just what do you think you're doing? Yes, you with the shifty, crazed expression. What are you doing wasting your time reading the back of the book when all you have to do is open it? What are you, some kind of coward? This hefty hardback is a companion to the wonderful Judge Dredd the role-playing game, and it's stuffed with all sorts of additions, articles and adventures to spice up your game. For a start, there are new rules, special abilities, even a whole new branch of Justice Department in the shape of Gulp Judge Exorcists. There are super-powered vigilantes, the rules for Shuggy, a guide to Britset 1, and a fully detailed sector of the city. There's even a pull-out-and-play board game which recreates the infamous mega-city pastime known as Blockout. And then, the adventures. Ease your players gently into the swing of things with On the Beat, knock them for six with Channel 9 Crime, Time Special, and then finish them off with Fear and Loathing in Mega City 1. Now all, I've got, uh, all you've got to do is buy it, or would you rather I booked you for wasting a judge's time? A uh, supplement for the Judge Red role-playing game. Now inside, the artwork is absolutely lovely, because much of it's from the comics. Some of the artwork done for it itself, for the book itself, isn't so great. Um, it's by role-playing artists who are very fine artists, but they're not up to the standard of people who are churning out absolutely brilliant stuff for the comic. Um, we've got credits page, loads of great artists in there. Um, interior illustration, Brian Bolland, Jun Byrne, Carl Crypto, Steve Dillon, Carlos Esquera, Brett Ewins, Ian Gibson, Cam Kennedy, Mike McMahon, Cliff Hunt, uh, Robertson and Ron Smith. Some massively talented names there. And we've got the contents page. And then we're into the book itself. We've got an introduction talking about what you can expect for it. And this is very tongue-in-cheek. You know, Mark Gascoigne, a uh, very humorous writer. First of all, he talks about um, if there's a topic we haven't covered in this companion, why not write in and tell us as long as it's not spugging Manta patrol tanks. And maybe we'll do another one. How do you use this book? Talks about Code 14 adventures. Um, why are they called Code 14s? Well, why not? These adventures are called Code 7s in Wacky Game TM. 
It's talking about the Hill Sector Blues book for Paranoia. And we reckon ours are twice as good, hence code 14s. Um, anyway, they stole the idea, idea of judges and called them budgie squadrons or something. So why shouldn't we get Rome back? Basically saying that the cops in Hill Sector Blues are a ripoff. Which is really weird because that book that I've got for Hill Sector Blues for Paranoia was sold through Games Workshop at the same time. Just written by different people, obviously. Anyway, going on to the first article, we've got You Can Do What? New Special Abilities for Experienced Judges. So these are the special abilities. Apart from just having skills and stats, you can get special abilities as your characters go up, which give them extra special abilities. You know, leap onto or between vehicles, recover quickly, a special break for. The ridiculous and much commented on two heads. The judge with this ability has two heads. Thus he will be denounced as a mutant and exiled from the city. This is a great way to get rid of a judge you don't like. But we've got fast aim, precise throw, open lock, um, special sector knowledge, uh, medical based ones, hypnotize, incapacitate. We've got side judge, hypnotize, mind wipe, suggestion. Uh, abilities for uh, citizens, if you want to make a citizen more skilled than the average. Then we're on to an article about Britsit. And this is a traveller's guide. So a very brief coverage of Britsit. It's kind of tongue-in-cheek. There's some jokes about different terms that are used. Um, I have to note that on the map, it shows that the town I live in happens to be in the red zone north. So I guess I'm irradiated. But it's very brief. It's just two pages. Statistically speaking. So we've got a page here going through changing the rules slightly. In the original rule book, it was seen that judges were a bit weak and not that tough in hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. So they've bolstered them up. They've added extra strength scores, um, made it so hand-to-hand -hand combat's a bit better. And then we've got the first of the Code 14 adventures. Now, after all that heralding of Code 14s is a big thing, there's only two of them in this book. And this is a short adventure where the judges come across people doing bite fights. Um, so people are basically taking big bites out themselves, like um, cockfighting or whatever, but just two people, probably with cybernetics. I've never seen it before, uh, Judge Honest. Uh, the ability to enter a dwelling place to carry out routine intensive investigations. So when you go in and you search somewhere, what you might find, blackmail notes or an illegal alien or stolen goods or a stooky addict, and it details all of these out. Then we've got a page with a couple of weapons, the law rod. So an advanced version of the law um, pistol, the lawgiver pistol, and the blazooga, so a heavy weapon that judges might use in defense of the city. And then we're on the beat, which is a choose-your-own-adventure style outing for a judge on their first day type thing. So you can take a starting character and run them through this. And it's got skill roles, it's got choosing different paragraphs you go on to. Some nice stuff in here. Uh, it's quite fun. And then another article, The Crazy File. So one of the big things in Mega City 1 is that people are unemployed and they get bored easily. So they come up with crazy hobbies to do to fill their time. So we've got the first one here, botting, where people dress up as robots to get a job. And they'll behave as a robot, they'll try and steal the job of a robot and pretend to be one, just so they're doing something. Uh, Taste of Burgers, Home Synthing, Gaxers, I found especially amusing. The craze for Gaxing was named after its originator, one Ernest G. Gaxon. So obviously E. Gary Gygax. Um, it's talking about people getting mixed up in their dreams, in their fantasies, and thinking that they are elves, dwarves, orcs and trolls, fighting uh, dragons and all that. Um, it also claimed to have the power to do the same to any of her dragon-riding death knights. The guy who created it went crazy. Um, some interesting things to spice up. Speed kills, a section on advanced driving rules. Um, so we've got flows of traffic, different encounters and things, different ways you can manoeuvre the vehicle, speed checks, control loss, pile-ups, aggressive driving. We've got faster than a speeding hover pad. Now this is superheroes 
and vigilantes in Judge Dredd. So people get bored doing things, they know the city's overwhelmed with crime, so they will go out and become a superhero. And it talks through one of them here, Ogden Schlepp, as Mega Man. He's got a jetpack, an exoskeleton, padding, a shield. And these are basically crazy folk that judges can encounter. What we've got here, um, Silver Streak, Captain Glider, Mr. Muscle, different superheroes. Then we've got this blockout game. It's a board game. You've got these sections to cut out to form the game. And you would have your different teams, different counters to move around. The rules are here. Uh, what else we got? Repro Man, another Code 14, the second of the two. Now this one is about a citizen who has cloned himself. But he's in a sort of love triangle, quadrangle. I'm not sure how many sides it's got. Because... Him and his two clones, one of them has fallen in love with somebody else, one of them absolutely adores his wife, his own wife, um, and the third has been cheating with his wife on the other ones by not just visiting her when he's supposed to, but going in extra visits when they're not around, when they're working. So she thinks he's taking days off, but he comes back with a slightly different personality. So it's a weird encounter that the players can uh, come across. Then we're on to one of the larger sections of the book, Downtown. Now this details an entire sort of sector where different things can happen. It's got lots of NPCs, nice map with brilliantly named uh, blocks in it. So we've got Pat Moore block, Mickey Moorcock, Billy Gibbons, the Baz Faulty block, Harold Finkelbaum block. Lots and lots of information about the things you can encounter there, different people, the criminal hierarchy. Um, there's a group who are based their things on Doctor Who. So we've got William Patrick O'Reilly here, who looks like Tom Baker's doctor. Um, NPC stats, so mobsters, um, shaggy hall owners, different people you can encounter. Detailing one of the blocks, the exact size of it, amount of people living in it. Um, more blocks there, a more detailed copy of the map with all the names uh, labelled out. What we got here, Bleecker Street, Reggie Perrin Megway, Mark Knopfler Megway, Dan Hartman Underpass, Jonathan Chambers, I don't know some of these people. Then we've got rules for Shuggy. Now this is a version of Billiards in the Judge Dredd game. Um, one of the major characters in the early days of Judge Dredd, Max Normal, played a lot of it. He was a sort of pool huckster type character. So we've got the rules explained for it, so you can include it in games. Um, the laughs on you, puny mortal. This is Mutations. So we can add mutations to different people because obviously Mega City One's surrounded by the Cursed Earth, which is a radioactive wasteland. And we can get different ones where they're intangible, they can create illusions, they can jump, they've got extra knowledge. And telekinesis with eyes, with hands. And then some adventure ideas. Now a lot of these mutations remind me of the ones out of the Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader book where you would roll very similar weird mutations. Now, this is the section which people talk about most when they refer to this book. The Justice Department's Exorcism Division. I ain't afraid of no ghosts creep. Because demonic spirits, devils and all that are part of the Judge Dredd comic, where I'm sure Judge Dredd has busted the devil at some point and put him in an isocube. Probably isocube 666, I would guess. But we've got special abilities that the judge exorcists can get they're a sort of subset of side judges and they can hold psychic force identify psychic forces and then we've got supernatural opponents so we've even got deities you know thor the god of thunder mercury wind messenger of the greek gods we've got demons here devils ghosts different supernatural things which the judge exorcists have to deal with from time to time or the players might call one in for now we're on to one of the larger sections in it, Channel 9 Crime Time Special, a full-scale investigation. Now this is for beginning judges. They are being sent out to cover a reporter. Channel 9 Crime Time Special is a TV show which reports on judges. Now people aren't generally interested in that, so it's not a highly rated program. But one of the sections is where citizens phone in and grass up their neighbours. So report which crimes are going on around them. 
And the Justice Department, of course, watches this and goes and arrests the people afterwards. But the host of the show has announced that he has information on a big mobster. He's not going to hand it over to the Justice Department because this is the feature of his lifetime, him taking down this mobster. But the judges are a small team of rookie judges sent out to arrest the mobster, find the evidence, and stop this reporter from getting killed. Um, different encounters throughout it. It's quite a detailed adventure. There's some interesting stuff in here. Um, fun stuff, as Judge Red adventures tend to be. Now, another full-scale investigation, this time for experienced judges. Fear and Loathing in Mega City 1. Now, I understand this is based on Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, because it's about a reporter who's a bit drug-addled, and I believe his attorney um, with him. There's a lot of lines in here which I guess are direct quotes, but I'm just not familiar enough with Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas to find this that I'm using. It's a fairly straightforward investigation. There's some fun to be had in here. It's definitely not wasted. And it's fairly long, so it will give you a few sessions. You know, nice detailed maps of places. Um, Doctor of all uh, journalism. Different progs. So these are basically your sessions being broken down. As I said, some very nice maps. The Bopperama. So some kind of discotheque, I would guess. Nightclub. Down into the Undercity. The ruins beneath... Mega City 1 because basically they build over the New York and all of the cities on the east coast of America and built Mega City 1 on top. So here we have basically a map of New York but the version which has been concreted over. Um, and they have to dwell, delve down into this to the mutated creatures which live down there. Um, troglodytes attack and um, some ruined buildings they'll encounter into. Now, I did say about the handouts, I forgot to mention as we went through. The handouts here are in the form of small cartoon strips. They're not brilliantly drawn, but they're decent enough, where the news reports from the reporter come out. So the players are watching the reporter as they're trying to track him down and what he's reporting on. So they can find out more and more until they eventually locate him and the mobster. We've got some other handouts here as they ask for information on different locations and people. And a diagram of the race, I guess. And that's it. Now, there are some absolutely gorgeous sections in here. The rules clarifications on fighting and driving are great because they aren't that wonderful in the original game. Although they remain fun. But it's nice to have the extra options in here. The options for mutants, for special abilities, for the judge exorcists are absolutely brilliant. And there's a few adventure ideas. It's a really good book. So much they've dragged out of White Dwarf, which were brilliant little articles. And some extra stuff, which just adds the polish on top and makes it worthwhile. So that was Judge Red Companion, and that won the poll this week with some 38% of the vote, way ahead of everything else, an absolute surprise and shock to me, and an absolute joy to cover. What a great book, and thank you for voting that in. Now, in second place, and 22%, was Roadhogs for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I actually thought was going to win. In third place was Denizens of Earth Dawn Volume 2 for Earth Dawn on 17%. In fourth place was Secrets of Shadowloo for the Street Fighter RPG on 13%. And way back behind was Spycraft on only 10%. It's kind of sad. I would like to cover it at some point, but I'd love to cover all of these because they're all great. Now, as usual, they're all cleared out. And we're going back to a Retro Adventures poll. And I've put in some interesting stuff. It's a good variety, I think, especially older stuff here. So, first up, we've got Bear's Den for Twilight 2000 from 1989. A Twilight 2000 adventure. These are very much open world. And this one you're going up against Russians with the support of the Ukrainians. I thought that was particularly apt when I spotted it and I would love to cover it. But again, I love to cover all of these things. 
Next up we've got Among the Dead for Dark Conspiracy. Now Dark Conspiracy is a games designer's workshop game like Twilight 2000 and one I absolutely adore where rifts have uh, opened up across America and extra dimensional beasties have come through, demons, aliens, all that sort of stuff. A fantastic game and one which was sadly dropped support for so soon and has kind of been forgotten about and one I love talking about. Next up we've got the Itian Menace for the Doctor Who RPG from Fazza. Now this came out in 1985. Now I remember seeing all these adventures in Boots the Chemists of all places, somewhere I would not expect to see role-playing stuff, but for some reason alongside the, all the stuff that they sell, all the pharmaceuticals, they also had a record section, a computer game section, and a role-playing section. And they had lots of Doctor Who stuff in it that I used to really love leafing through. So it would be a joy to cover this one. Next up we've got Infected for Earthdawn, another one of my favourite games. One of my favourite fantasy games, post-apocalyptic fantasy, where people are coming out of basically underground vaults, because the world is just becoming safe from a magical menace once more and a massive apocalypse has happened and people are having to reclaim the surface. And this is an adventure for it. Um, probably involving the horrors, which were the big menace. And finally, we've got Queen Euphoria for Shadowrun. Now this is one of the most fun Shadowrun adventures I've ever played. I had absolute ball playing through it. Great, great fun. So. I would absolutely adore to cover this as well. But that's five for five that I'd love to cover. So the ball's in your court. You choose what we get to look at next. Now, what else has been going on? Over on Drive Through RPG, I've been putting out Victorian classes. Because we're building up a Victorian horror version of 5th edition. So I'll be doing classes, I'll be doing monsters, I'll be doing a setting. And building it up that way. So if you're interested in that, check it out on Drive Through RPG, or you can join as a Patreon of lead or librarian status. Check the Patreon down below, and all of my writings are shared with you free of charge. And finally, on RPGGamer.org, I've been covering a bunch of the comics that I'm catching up with after doing all of the Young Jedi Adventures stuff. Of course, every week I'm catching up with a bad batch, but I'm catching up with a few issues I've fallen behind of the Vader comic, which is really quite interesting, and the High Republic comic, which is sadly being disappointing, as it always has been, because they have such great ideas, but they never have faith in those ideas. But anyway, I'm putting up reviews, I'm putting up stats. If you're into the Star Wars D6 system, if you check us out over on RPGGamer.org, I'd love to hear your feedback and input so we can create much more stuff and keep supporting this old classic game. But anyway, I think I've witted on for quite long enough, as usual. So thank you very much for watching. And as always, most of all, you look after yourselves. I'll catch you later. Bye now.